He developed the murder weapon himself, so that it would fit his grip perfectly. Dozens of women were murdered in that bathroom. Even if the blood had been washed away, when trace elements of that are detected, luminol produces light. Then I looked up at the ceiling. There was flesh. It was all there. All the spatters. Meet Yu Young Chul, a cannibalistic man who consumed 26 of his victims, commonly known as the Raincoat Killer, who gained notoriety as one of South Korea's deadliest serial killers. Armed with a custom-made hammer, Cho set out on a gruesome spree of violence that would be etched in history as one of the most appalling, committing acts that would leave even the most seasoned investigators reeling. His crime spree took place in Seoul from September 2003 to July 2004, during which he murdered at least 20 individuals. In late 2003, Yu targeted the homes of affluent elderly people, breaking in and using a hammer to bludgeon the occupants. He then staged the crime scenes to appear as if they were the result of a robbery. Aside from his attacks on the wealthy elderly, Yu expanded his victims to include prostitutes and escort girls. Between May and July 2004, he lured at least 11 women to his office, where he subjected them to violence with a hammer before their bodies. Although Yu claimed responsibility for 26 deaths, he was officially convicted of 20 murders and additional serious crimes. Let us delve into the unsettling universe of the Korean man who ate his victims and earned the notorious title of the Raincoat Killer. Yu, born on April 18, 1970, in Gocheng, Jeonbuk, faced early challenges when his parents separated, leading him to relocate to Mapo, Seoul, with his father. Growing up in poverty, he experienced bullying in school, fostering resentment toward affluent individuals. Despite financial struggles, Yu found solace in his interests, painting, playing the guitar, and singing. Although he aspired to attend an arts-focused high school, his academic performance hindered him and he enrolled in a different institution. Even before his infamous criminal activities, Yu had a history of legal issues. In 1988, he faced arrest for theft, followed by a 10-month prison sentence in 1991 for a similar offense. In 1993, he received an eight-month prison term for another theft conviction. Yu's criminal record also included selling child fee in 1995 and a two-year prison sentence in 1998 for theft, forgery, and identity theft. A couple of years before, in 1991, Yu married his girlfriend, with whom he had a son. However, his life continued down a troubled path as he was arrested in 2000 for the rape of a 15-year-old girl, resulting in a three-year and six-month prison sentence. His marital relationship ended in divorce. Yu was released from prison on September 11, 2003. He didn't wait long to commit the next crime, but this time he decided it was time to kill. In late 2003, Yu Young Chul murdered nine wealthy senior citizens. He used a customized hammer, jackknife, and glove as his weapons of choice in these killings. So let's go back in time a bit and see how it all started. On September 24, 2003, Yu Young Chul targeted the Sinsadong neighborhood for his criminal activities, specifically choosing this time to exploit the absence of working neighbors and the presence of elderly individuals at home. Breaking into the residence of university professor Lee Diok Su and his wife, Lee Yoon Ok Yu, employed a knife to fatally stab Diok Su in the neck. Subsequently, he used a specially modified hammer weighing around four kilograms to bludgeon the couple to death. Yu had customized the hammer for better grip, altering its handle and filling gaps with silicone. To obscure his involvement, Yu meticulously wiped down surfaces and created a false narrative by ransacking the couple's closet without taking any valuables, making it appear like a robbery-motivated murder. After securing the scene, he locked the front door and exited through the main gate. Realizing he had left his knife behind, Yu returned to the crime scene, smashed the doorknob to retrieve the weapon, and then made his exit. Police later identified shoe prints at this location, connecting them to Yu's subsequent murders. 
A week later, Yu forcibly entered a residence in Gugidong. His initial victim was Mo Kang, the grandmother, whom he attacked with a hammer and stabbed. Upon encountering the homeowner's wife, Li Mo, who witnessed the gruesome scene, Yu threatened her, forcing her to sit on the sofa. He inquired about individuals upstairs, and when she identified her husband and son, Yu instructed her to bow. Upon her refusal, he kicked her in the stomach and bludgeoned her head. The son descended the stairs and Yu dragged him back up, compelling him to kneel before fatally attacking him. Yu continued his rampage, attempting to stage a robbery by making the safe appear tampered with. Police discovered shoe prints at the crime scene, initiating their investigation. On October 16th, he attacked again, but this time he targeted the wife of a millionaire, breaking into their house around 12.30 p.m. After confirming there were no others at home, he assaulted her with a hammer in the bathroom. Despite being found alive an hour later by her son, she succumbed to her injuries after being taken to the hospital. Hungry for blood, he did not wait long for the next victim. Just a few days later on November 18th, Yu forced entry into a Yehua Dong home around 11 a.m. Confronting the housekeeper, Bei Ji Hye Yu revealed a knife, demanding directions to the master bedroom. In the master bedroom, he found Kim Jong Sok and bludgeoned him to death. Holding a baby, the housekeeper tried to protect the child, but Yu took it, placing it on the living room sofa and covering it tightly with a blanket. Returning to the master bedroom, Yu killed the housekeeper. In an attempt to stage a robbery, he used a pickaxe and pruning shears to open a safe. Accidentally cutting himself and splitting his right middle finger knuckle, Yu set the house on fire to eliminate potential DNA evidence. The fire partially destroyed the residence, fortunately spared the baby, later rescued by Jong Suk's daughter-in-law. The crime scene yielded shoe prints and CCTV footage capturing the perpetrator wearing a sweater from the victim's closet to conceal blood stains. After a brief hiatus from murders, Yu moved to an office in Nogasandong. He came up with the idea of posing as a police officer to extort money. In late 2003, he initiated a relationship with an escort girl, and the two cohabited for two months. However, upon discovering Yu's criminal history, educational background, and previous marriage, she decided to sever ties with him. Many attribute this event, combined with his past failed marriage, as a catalyst for his subsequent murders and the selection of his victims. Moving into 2004, Yu's killing spree resumed. Under the guise of a business trip massage, Yu posed as a police officer catching prostitutes. He lured a prostitute named Quan Jin He to his place, where he fatally strangled her and delivered her body. Yu disposed of the remains behind the Sogang University Library, implementing a new modus operandi of using multiple plastic bags. In May 2004, Yu's killing spree focused solely on prostitutes. He would call for an escort girl, engage in sexual activities, and then turn violent. Preferring to strike from above while the victim knelt or crouched, Yu displayed tenderness before executing his victims. This pattern extended to nine more victims, selected for their slim and shorter stature to facilitate dismemberment and disposal. Yu's motivation for targeting these women is believed to stem from resentment towards his ex-wife, who worked in a massage parlor, and his ex-girlfriend, who was a prostitute. His last murder occurred on July 13, 2004. On July 15, 2004, just two days after his last murder, Yu was apprehended. To avoid suspicion, he used different names when calling prostitution businesses. This strategy unraveled when No, the business owner, became concerned about missing women who had responded to calls from the same number, 6523. After contacting Inspector Yang from the Mobile Investigation Unit, an operation unfolded. On July 15th at 2 a.m., a call from the same number prompted action. No, Inspector Yang and others split up, tracking a woman in a taxi. Yu changed the meeting place multiple times, expressing dissatisfaction with the woman's height. Simultaneously, Yang sought men's phone numbers in public spaces. Eventually, Yu settled on a location behind the Grand Mart, where he was apprehended. 
During the arrest, Yu chewed massage cards, attempting to destroy the evidence. His phone revealed the crucial last digits, 6523. Initially treated as a thief due to insufficient murder evidence, Yu confessed to the killings shortly after his arrest, admitting to 26 murders. While in custody, Yu feigned a seizure, allowing him to escape briefly. He went home to destroy evidence and acquired sleeping pills. Despite the escape, he was recaptured 11 to 12 hours later. During his second arrest, Yu admitted to all his crimes, revealing that he engaged victims in hour-long conversations about their personal lives before killing them. Despite changing his story multiple times, Yu agreed to lead the police to the victims' bodies. During this process, he wore a yellow raincoat and a mask, earning him the moniker Raincoat Killer. His apartment found clean and orderly, housed an obsessively neat scrapbook. Yu claimed to have consumed the internal organs of victims to cleanse his spirit or treat epilepsy, although there is no conclusive evidence. Notably, he expressed the intent to continue killing if not apprehended. But his trial did not go smoothly. Yu Young Chul made his initial court appearance on September 6, 2004, facing 21 murder charges. During this first visit, he apologized to the victims' families but asserted his intention to continue the killings. Despite initially refusing to return to court, he reappeared two weeks later. The following scheduled court appearance on October 4th was disrupted by Yu's suicide attempt the night before, where he tried hanging himself from a wall fan but was stopped by guards. In a shocking statement, he faced the victim's families, asserting that the women deserved to be caught by him. On December 13th, Yu Young Chul was found guilty of 20 murders and received a death sentence.